My name is Writer Histories. Welcome to my channel. The cool night breeze danced among the trees as I nestled close to the crackling fire. The flames cast shifting shadows against the darkness of the Piranha countryside where I had decided to start anew. My name is Leonardo, and this is the account of my journey in the small town of Pinho, where I was embraced by the simplicity and beauty of rural life. Born and raised amidst the urban chaos of Sao Paulo, I found myself lost in the frenetic routine and everyday stress. The deafening traffic, imposing buildings, and constant hustle had slowly eroded my sanity. Despite appreciating the luxuries and comforts that the big city offered, I knew something essential was missing, peace of mind. So, when the opportunity to move to the countryside arose, I seized it with both hands. I was willing to trade the rush and the fatter paycheck for a more serene and fulfilling way of life. I arrived at my uncle's farm in Pinho with a mix of nervousness and hope pulsating in my chest. After all, this would be my chance to rediscover the true meaning of tranquility. As I crossed the farm gate, I was greeted by the fresh scent of damp earth and the birdsong echoing across the green expanse before me. It was as if a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, and I breathed more freely than I had in years. However, the adaptation was not easy. The dark and silent nights, which had once seemed like a promise of peace, now haunted me with an unfamiliar loneliness. But over time, I learned to appreciate the simple beauty of life in the countryside. Each dawn was a masterpiece painted by the rising sun, and each sunset was a symphony of colors that soothed my restless soul. Here, far from the distractions of the city, I found the peace I had longed for. And although my journey is only just beginning, I know that every step taken towards this new life is a step in the right direction. For in the serenity of rural life, I discovered the true meaning of happiness, being in harmony with myself and the world around me. So, as the embers of the fire glow under the starry sky, I feel grateful to have found my refuge in this corner of tranquility in the heart of Piranha. And may this story serve as a reminder that sometimes, it takes leaving the familiar behind to find the true essence of life. While the fluorescent lights of the office dazzled my tired eyes, my cell phone began to vibrate frantically. Amidst documents and emails, my father's name flashed on the screen. Surprised, I answered the call, feeling a mix of nostalgia and curiosity. Hey, Dad, I greeted, feeling a lump of emotion in my throat. Leo, my son, how's life in the big city? My father's familiar voice echoed from the other end of the line, filled with longing and concern. As we exchanged news and updates about our lives, my father mentioned an unexpected situation. My cousin Marcio needed to sort out some matters in the big city and was lost in the concrete and asphalt maze. My father's suggestion was clear, offer hospitality and assistance to him during his stay in the city. Sure thing dad, don't worry. It'll be a pleasure to help out Marcio, I reassured, knowing that my cousin's presence would bring some life into my solitary routine in the metropolis. Marcio arrived shortly after, with his typical energy and a wide smile. As he sorted out his pending matters in the city, our conversations revealed a mutual desire to escape the urban hustle in search of a simpler and more authentic life. You have no idea what you're missing, Leo. Life here is so different, so much more real, he remarked, his voice full of admiration and nostalgia. His words resonated with me, awakening a dormant seed of desire for change that had been inside me for a long time. I'm glad you liked it, Marcio. I think I'm ready for a change too, I confessed, feeling a knot in my stomach at the prospect of leaving my urban life behind. That's when Marcio mentioned an opportunity at the family farm in Piranha. An invitation to trade the concrete and traffic for the greenery and tranquility of the countryside. You'll be trading your car for a horse, he joked, but there was sincerity in his gaze. With a racing heart and a mix of emotions, I accepted the challenge. Selling my belongings and embracing uncertainty, I moved to the small town of Pinho, where my uncle and his family welcomed me with open arms. The reality shock was immense, but the hospitality and warmth compensated for any initial discomfort. Soon, I found myself immersed in rural life, helping out on the farm and discovering a sense of belonging that I had never experienced in the big city. And so, amidst the verdant fields and starry nights of rural Piranha, I began to write a new chapter in my story. A chapter marked by simplicity, by connection with nature, and above all, by the courage to follow my heart in pursuit of a more authentic and meaningful life. 
In the first few days on the farm, I fully embraced rural life. The fresh air invigorated my lungs, and homemade food made me forget about the fast food and fancy restaurants of the big city. On one of those sunny mornings, my uncle invited me to accompany him to the town to buy groceries. I was excited about the prospect of exploring more of the region and readily accepted. On the way, we chatted animatedly, sharing stories and laughter. But the mood shifted when my uncle mentioned a strange condition, not to go out alone after 10 p.m., especially unarmed. His serious expression and enigmatic words piqued my curiosity, and a slight shiver ran down my spine. Without beating around the bush, my uncle shared a story that seemed straight out of a horror tale. He spoke of werewolves haunting the forests of the region, appearing on full moon days to terrorize the unwary. Although I tried to disguise my disbelief, his words echoed in my mind, casting a shadow of doubt on the safety of those lands. Despite my skepticism, I agreed to respect the local tradition and beliefs, however strange they might seem. After all, who was I to doubt the wisdom of the local inhabitants? However, an event would change my perspective forever. A party in town was scheduled, an event eagerly awaited by everyone in the region. The excitement was palpable as we joined other residents to make our way there, sharing jokes and anticipating the fun that awaited us. As we arrived at the square, flooded with colorful lights and upbeat music, the celebratory atmosphere was contagious. My cousin, always sociable, dove headfirst into the crowd while I observed the excitement around me. However, as the night progressed and the shadows lengthened, a chill of unease settled in my chest. My uncle's ominous words echoed in my mind, fueling a growing fear that I struggled to ignore. And it was then, in the tense silence of the night, that something happened, something that would challenge my convictions and forever change my view of that ancient and mysterious land. The festive atmosphere of the night quickly gave way to a persistent discomfort in my stomach. The combination of drinks began to weigh me down, and the discomfort became unbearable. Although not completely drunk, I knew it was time to leave to avoid ruining my cousin's night. Reluctantly, I announced my departure, but my cousin vehemently opposed. Leo, are you crazy? He argued, with a mix of concern and disbelief. Look at the time. It's too dangerous to walk around here alone at this hour. Let's stay until dawn, when it'll be safe to go back together. Although I tried to downplay my cousin's warnings about the dangers of the region, he persisted in his silent concern. In a gesture of caution, he handed me a small flashlight and a pocket knife, insisting that I take them for protection. Reluctantly, I accepted the items and said goodbye, determined to face the nighttime road alone. The night was clear, the full moon lit the way, and the silence of the early morning was broken only by the gentle chirping of crickets. However, as I progressed along the lonely road, a sense of unease began to creep into my mind. Waves of paranoia plagued me as I passed through dark and dense stretches of vegetation, and a chill ran down my spine when I heard suspicious noises around me. At a certain point along the way, about halfway, the feeling of being watched intensified, increasing my anxiety. Every step seemed to echo too loudly in the darkness, and the rustle of dry leaves under my feet was deafening. It was then that I spotted a shadowy figure on the side of the road, about 50 meters from where I was. At first, I thought it was a large animal, perhaps a wild boar, which occasionally roamed the area. But as I approached, terror froze my blood. The light from the flashlight revealed a grotesque figure, crouched on all fours, breathing heavily. My heart hammered in my chest as I tried to rationalize the scene before me. But then, in a shiver of horror, that creature rose to its hind legs, emitting a guttural growl that pierced the stillness of the night. Fear paralyzed my limbs, but the instinct for survival screamed within me. With trembling hands, I brandished the pocket knife, prepared to confront the unknown looming before me on that dark road. The flickering light of the flashlight revealed a sight that defied all logic and understanding. A creature half-man, half-beast, with pointed ears and a twisted face, emerged from the shadows, its eyes reflecting the flashlight with furious intensity. A wave of terror washed over me, and my survival instinct screamed louder than anything else. Without a second thought, I began to run as fast as my legs would allow, adrenaline pumping through my veins as I distanced myself from that monstrous aberration. The creature seemed ready to hunt me down at any moment, its heavy footsteps echoing behind me as I dashed along the dark road. For a moment, the world around me seemed distorted, as if I were trapped in a surreal nightmare. 
But the fear was real and my only concern was to escape from that terrible beast that was rapidly approaching. Then, I spotted a small light on the horizon, a brightly lit house on the side of the road. It was a small farmhouse, an unlikely refuge amidst the darkness of the night. Without hesitation, I jumped the fence and ran towards the house, shouting for help with all my might. The creature was almost catching up to me when I felt a strong blow to my head and everything went dark. When I woke up, I was in the safety of the farmhouse, surrounded by the concern of a man who had rescued me from the sharp teeth of that demonic creature. I am grateful to have escaped death on that fateful night. The next morning, my uncle greeted me at home with a mix of relief and reprimand. The gentleman who saved me explained that I was lucky to have escaped with my life and that many aren't so fortunate. Looking at my uncle, I realized the weight of his previous warning and the gravity of my own reckless actions. The creature on the road wasn't just a scary story to scare children, but a dark reality I was destined to face. From that day on, I learned to respect the beliefs and warnings of those who know the secrets of the wilderness. I never walked alone at night in those dark woods again, and I carry the physical and emotional scars of that experience as a constant reminder of life's fragility and the need to respect the unknown. If you've made it this far, thank you very much and until next time.